Greetings to President Hell Toastmasters and most welcome guests. Now when I was sitting back there and looking at Natalia, right? Nikolai, and not David because David is an experienced Toastmaster. <laughs> <laughs> I recall September the 17th, 2009, when I was the first time in Moscow for speakers standing on the stage and presenting myself. Actually, this very stage. I was very excited and wanted to impress as many people as possible. Unfortunately, it wasn't that easy, at least that time. Why did I come to the club? I wanted to improve my pub English speaking skill, mostly. And besides that, I wanted to, for some time, to find an international community I can immerse in. Of course, there were other variants, like joining the Mormon sect, <laughs> or, for example, finding a public, not a public speaking, but a conversational club. You know, one of the clubs where people gather in a cafe and talk about anything. For some reason, talking for the sake of talking is boring for me. And as to the Mormons, by the way, do we have Mormons known as? There it is. I, no? <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> and as to the Mormons, as I saw it, their main goal was to make me a member so I can attend their meetings, scream, Hallelujah, every now and then. And of course, the main reason was make me transfer most of my money to them, as I saw it. So it wasn't very interesting for me. But a Toastmaster Club seemed something different, meaning they wrote on their side that they had structure at their meetings and that they had special programs for the development of their members. It looked like a good idea for me to try it out, to at least try it out. I went to a meeting and I stayed for four years. Did I achieve my main goal? Absolutely. My English speaking skill become became significantly better. For example, when I was at a couple of job interviews and I was asked to demonstrate the skill, it wasn't even funny. It was like a little kid coming to you in the street and seriously challenging me to a fight. After a couple of my phrases, I was usually told, okay, 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 your English is good. <laughs> Let's stop here. But luckily, I was delighted to find that the little there was much more to Toastmaster experience than just English speaking skill. Natalia, you told us that you were interested in becoming a better public speaker, right? Now, talking about becoming a better public speaker, if you turn around you and look at the person sitting two tables behind you, you can see the best speaker of Moscow three speakers in 2012. And when in Sigankova? And when we interviewed her in 2011 for the toast for the article we wrote and submitted to the Toastmaster magazine, she, correct me if I'm wrong, Nina, she told us that at the beginning, before joining Toastmasters, she was a shy person and actually feared talking before audiences. And at the first meetings, she actually envied the bravery of people who were able to take the stage and talk before the audience. And here she is. And I can give an you perhaps a more impressive example. Just the other day I read in the March 2013 issue of the Toastmaster magazine a story about Garrett Geralt, an American Toastmaster who became a professional human speaker and moved to the semi-finals of the Toastmaster International Speech Contest. I think that his achievements are very respectable, but in a special case, he's, he's special because he's, he is and was a stutter. How many of you know what the word stutter or stammer is, what, what it means? Okay, for those of you who don't know, a stutterer is a person who talks like that. 
Dennis. If a person like that, and he was embarrassed before joining Toastmasters, he was embarrassed to stood up in a class and present and just say aloud his name. If a person like this can become a world level speaker, you can definitely become a better public speaker. Provided you visit meetings regularly and do your homework. <laughs> 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 and as to improving your English speaking skills, perhaps I have already answered your question, Nikolai, right? Of course, there is much to love about Toastmasters, but naturally, there are some things to keep in mind. I've been a member of Toastmasters for nearly four years, and during the period, I participated in organizing two our New Year parties. I participated in organizing two, one speech contest. I was a con contestant three times in our club speech contest and was the chief judge in two speech contests. Then I served as the president of Moscow Free Speakers for a year and served as the vice president of education. To make a long story short, if there is anything that you can do as a Toastmaster in an undistricted Toastmaster club, it is most likely that I have made it, that I have done it. And with all that experience, I came up to an interesting image of what at least our Moscow Toastmasters clubs are and <laughs> in general, and what our meetings are. And when I think about our clubs and our meetings, what comes to my mind is something like a sand picture, a picture made of sand. Why? First of all, I think that every meeting we have to create an image for our club. Every meeting defines the image newcomers have of our clubs and even some new members have of our clubs. And secondly, just as a sand picture, it's done. Our clubs are fragile. What do I mean by that? I don't know whether our very experienced member, Henry Norman, immediate past president, Andrei Kasim, current past president, Dmitry, a very experienced Toastmaster Davis and a past president Nina would agree with me. But I think that a successful meeting, let alone a successful event like a speech contest, is a minor miracle. And people like Yana, like Andrei, like Dmitry, current officers of the executive committee are heroes because they do the best part of the work behind the scenes for the clubs to operate and let us enjoy the experience. But even with those magnificent heroes around, just their very valuable, important work is not enough for clubs to operate. I mean, how many people do you think it takes to organize a regular meeting like this one? Experienced people don't give you <laughs> suggestions. How many people do you think it takes to organize a meeting? Three to five, maybe. Any other suggestions? Seven. Seven. Okay, I think it's more about 15. Because you have to have three speakers, three personal evaluators for them, six people already. You have to find the account, the timer, the grammarian, the cake mask. You have to find the Toastmaster, the general evaluator, the table topic master. It takes at least around 50 people to organize a regular Toastmaster meeting. With that said, I think that not only officers are those who define how good will be our meetings, but each and every one of us defines in a way, contributes to how good our meetings can be. And what can we do? make our meetings 
best. Newcomers, guests, and fresh members. Your role is rather easy. Just visit our meetings regularly. Sign up for roles, sign up for speeches. You will definitely be better off doing that. Members who have been for about half a year or more, who have performed, delivered several speeches, who have tried different major roles, like the Toastmaster, the General Evaluator. Please, don't just use our club, our clubs, to come every now and then and deliver a speech or two. But rather, at the very least, sign up for major roles, the Toastmaster, the General Evaluator, the Table Topics Master. Evaluate people. You are experienced. You know what it takes. You know some ropes. You have already learned them. So you have something to share. And if possible, and this will be the best case scenario, become officers of the Executive Committee. And it won't be a sacrifice for you, because at the very least, first of all, become a competent communicator, a competent leader, or further on, will make your Toastmaster experience tangible for the outer world. You will have something to present to other people, so they know you don't just waste your time in the clubs. And you will definitely become better leaders, better speakers, better organizers, both you members, members, and all of us on the whole will win in this situation. And us two so-called veterans, and to be honest, I consider myself one, <laughs> meaning members who have been for several years, who have tried any possible role there is to try in clubs, and who have served as officers of the, exec exec I'm very sorry, of the executive committee, we can do what we can do is we have to just stay around, share our experience with the current new executive committee officers, mentor new members, evaluate people because we have experience to do that in a quality way, and of course challenge ourselves with more difficult speeches. We have to wo work. Every and each of us have to work. Our combined effort defines the state of our clubs. Meaning, we can either pursue our isolated interests, and if we do this, the club will likely wither or perhaps even die out with time. But if we choose to work, most of us will choose to work for the benefit of all of us. We will care for our club and will nurture it. People, let's keep our clubs alive and flourishing.